guys welcome again it's part two of fertility control i is contraception um last time we talked about the different methods the types and we even came to the point where we talked about the non-contraceptive benefits where we found out for the hormonal we could have less period pain less flow of the menstrual period and less of the mood swings that we normally have before and during periods so this day what do we want to discuss on this topic today so this is part two of the cell i'm just going to give you more insight on the topic what happens when you skip your pills or what happens then if you happen to skip the pills do you take the pills don't you take the pills what happens this is all that I'm going to talk about today and more on the con uh, on other methods of contraception. Uh, I'll go into depth about it to give you a bigger picture of what is happening. More of the advantages and the sorry and the disadvantages of the different methods of contraceptives. So if it's not a bother, let's draw again and talk about this topic. Thank you. So what kind of people are not supposed to use the hormonal uh, contraceptives, like the combined pills? We call it contraindications. For the hormonal pill, we have absolute. This means these people cannot, should not, will not ever use these pills. And then there is relative, where you could talk to your doctor and maybe you could come to a nice understanding into exactly how much of the drug can you use and how much you can't use so for relative at times you could for absolute you can never use so have you had a stroke or maybe you're having an ongoing stroke you can't um are you having any heart conditions that is still ongoing like a heart attack you just had recently you cannot take these things there is um another thing called ischemic heart disease it still has got to do with a heart, a heart attack but in a different way it's like when your heart muscles are not working properly and not so i told you stroke current or history of a stroke heart attack a current or history of a heart attack an ischemic heart disease if you're a smoker hold on now don't think all smokers cannot use these pills a smoker who's above 35 years and you smoke more than 15 cigarettes a day then you should not use these drugs please for relative if you're a smoker but you're less than 35 years and you smoke less than 15 cigarettes a day then you could maybe depending on your doctor if you've consulted him so for other relative there's obesity um obesity will this uh, i'll be talking about this topic in in my coming videos i'll explain to you when do you know somebody is obese or is obese or is morbidly obese i mean there's different uh, aspects not every person who looks chubby or fat is obese because um with obesity there's a different definition and there are people who are overweight so do not confuse being overweight with being obese so here, the other thing, if you have diabetes, it's also very relative. So here, if you've had, uh, there's this thing called DVT, deep venous thrombosis. If you, you ever had it or you're having it, then it's an absolute contraindication. You're having, uh, currently you're suffering from an active hepatitis infection. You should not. If you're having severe cirrhosis, that is liver disease, you should not. And um, yeah, basically these are most of the things that you should not, uh, you're not allowed, it's an absolute contraindication. So for whoever that is planning on using and falls under any of this category, and the biggest one that I forgot, I'm sorry ladies, either you've been pregnant or you just gave birth and it's six weeks after you, you you delivered please avoid con uh, the the contraceptives at all so now we've done the contraindications people want to know then what could happen to me what are the side effects or 
are these drugs just okay to be used at all times if I need to use them and I don't have any of these contraindications? Of course, like any other drug, there are side effects. So, you could feel like uh, you're gaining weight. You could feel or actually notice your weight, your, your weight is getting a higher weight gain. Um, two, you could have breast tenderness. You could feel your breasts are always painful to touch up so breast tenderness i remember last time i told you it uh, reduces the post or pre menopausal symptoms of feeling moody but sometimes also it could make your moods a little bit off the other thing reduce in libido this means your sex drive will not be as it used to be, maybe. Not all women experience these things. Some people do, some people don't. So you could have a decrease in, in your sex drive. And the other thing, um, there's weight gain, breast tenderness, mood swings. And um, I'm forgetting this one side effect, but when I remember it, I'll, I'll come back because I, something else came up and I remembered. So I don't want to not tell you guys about it. If you're having current breast cancer, you're having breast cancer, avoid this because most of the breast cancers have been identified to be hormone positive. So if you're feeding your body with hormones, of course, it's going to want to grow bigger and it's going to be hazardous for you. So <clears throat> we've done the contraindications, the side effects and all that. The one thing I'll tell you, as I told you earlier, why is barrier method most important or rather why is it a choice for people or couples who are not married or who are not even planning on playing around with their fertility because some women would come off the pill and maybe find it hard to conceive again so in case you just you ever conceived and you don't want to take the chances into making trying to make a baby later and then you have to like try so hard because maybe the contraceptions are still in the cycle and your body is still acting up because our body um, our bodies rather are made up of lots of other hormones and this interaction sometimes could make the body go crazy so that's why i normally um suggest uh the barrier methods which is condoms that like i told you earlier works better because one the advantages of the condoms i don't have to write them down here yeah? one it's very cheap to buy a condom two they're readily available in even the small shops around three you not only protect yourself against hiv or other stis but you're protecting yourself against the pregnancy so it has a cover-up for the, the the pregnancy plus the diseases you see the only problem with this or maybe that is the major problem most people keep on complaining is the fact that you find it might interrupt the heat of the moment so that's the biggest um, problem about it and some people happen to react to the material that the, the condoms are made of latex so those are the two main um, disadvantages of condoms so as we already talked about um, I, I think I had done small parts of uh, the natural and the disadvantages and advantages and now this the last thing I would want to talk about is if you miss a pill let's say let's call them missed pills it's a sad story yeah extremely very sad in case you happen to miss your pill so then what happens when you miss your pill don't freak out because it's something that can always be sorted out and this is how it goes have you missed two pills less or two of course it has to be two or is it been less than 12 hours since you're supposed to have taken the pill but you haven't don't freak out what you do take the pill that you're supposed to take as early as you remember take the pill that you're supposed to take last there are two here take the one that you're supposed to have taken just immediate and then continue with your cycle as normal make sure you take your pills at the same time every day and forget the one that has already passed yeah and you don't have to you don't need any other form of contraceptives uh, whatsoever you're good to go what if that Tari, i have missed three pills 
and it's been over 12 hours since I took my last pill. Do I mean like I've totally <sighs> spoiled my thing? No, relax, still nothing is spoiled. Immediately remember, take the one pill that was just before you forgot, yeah? And then continue with the normal uh, pills. But then for this now, you have to use extra protection. Don't just rely on the pill because it might fail you if you're doing you having regular intercourse. So take an extra protection, maybe put an add-on like use a condom, which is the easiest way, for at least seven days. After that, you're good to go. Oh no, I traveled, I went to visit my grandma, I forgot my pills at home, there was no pharmacy to buy pills, and I stayed there for a whole week. It's been seven days, no pills. Seven days, no problem. Again, take the one that you're supposed to take. And again, extra seven days for um, protection, extra protection other than just the pill. And continue with your cycle as it was intended. And when you finish, you should finish your entire pack. Rest the seven days that you're supposed to rest and continue with your pills. Oh my goodness. Something happened. My husband came. I was taking the pills just fine. But he took me off to abroad. We had so much fun. It was for like two weeks. I just had so much fun. I forgot there was something like pills. And how do I continue with my, my schedule? Is it like, pardon my English, but is it screwed? No, you're not yet screwed. What you do, you continue with the pills. Finish that pack. Don't give yourself the seven day break. And as you're finishing with the pack, you see from here, from the three days, you need, must have extra protection as you're taking the pills once you remember. So you, 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 you finish your pack, the ones that you had with the extra seven. After finishing, you do not rest for the seven days that you're supposed to take a break. You continue with the next cycle as if nothing ever happened. And trust me, everything should be fine. But again, there are cases where you missed a pill, even just two, and you happen to be active, and maybe that good day you are ovulating and you happen to be pregnant. Don't fret. Babies are good things, good people, nice humans. You should have them when you can. So this basically is about the missed pills and um, how you should take them in case you've missed and the contraindications and the, uh, and the side effects. And what else would you rather want to know about this topic because let me tell you something contraception this topic the contraceptives it's a wild wide topic i could not fix everything in to be able to even with the part two i could not fix everything in to make sure that you guys have the most of the knowledge that can be found on uh, different sources books internet and everywhere but I've tried my best to actually uh, in emphasize, sorry, on the pills because I know that it's the most used, uh, the most used uh, method of contraceptives, uh, contraception, and trying to give you all the details that I think, as a woman, you need to know. But above all, for the ladies who would want to be using these pills, and maybe are not in a stable relationship or might be in a stable relationship what i always advise my patient is make sure you and your partner get tested for most of the common uh, sti sexually transmitted disease but the most common is that people keep on testing or it's voluntary and it's free almost everywhere in the country or even abroad hiv please make sure that the person don't only protect yourself against pregnancy because at least for a pregnancy it's not a disease you could always carry the baby through give birth and be fine but if you get some disease let's let's say hiv then uh, i don't know what to say but then it's going to be a sad situation which we don't want to create sad situations we're trying to create a place where we could be all healthy so the one thing that I just remembered, sorry guys, I forgot, is um, the implants. They also, they also fall under um, hormonal, 
but I had forgotten to talk about them because nowadays most people don't actually use them because the most uh, the, 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 the sin at the disadvantage or the biggest disadvantage just had sorry the biggest disadvantage <laughs> I'm sorry guys the biggest disadvantage with the implants it's been it's it seemed like after you remove the implant it becomes very hard to try and conceive so most women have and it because it's something that is done for a prolonged time maybe five years maybe seven maybe three and nobody would want to stay all that while with not having a baby so it's not been so much into use right now or these days that's why i didn't talk much about it so anyway guys this is all i feel i've exhausted most of the most important important things on and pills and contraceptives and different methods but i know lots of questions will be arising from the same feel free to either comment below and tell us about it tell me about it i'll be happy to answer you whatever way or if you feel it's very sensitive and you wouldn't want to comment in for the public sorry we have a page it's called sorry guys no stress dr saru cynthia on Facebook and Twitter get me on Dr. underscore Saru Cynthia here you could DM me you could inbox me on Facebook and I'll be sure to answer those private questions that you feel you cannot put them on public and for that be fit and well love and love Dr. Saru